welcome to this week's Tuesday's Tech Talk with me, Danny Ritchie, from GR Research. And today I'm going to be following up on a subject that Ron Bernay at New Record Day covered on his last Fridays, Frequency Fridays, and that was uh, the width of a baffle of a speaker versus how well that speaker disappears in the room. In other words, he's looking at surface reflections of the baffle versus imaging and soundstage layering and things like that that uh, create a three-dimensional sound field and not sound as if the sound's coming directly from the speaker baffle. And I'm going to look at that from a technical aspect and define a term that I've been asked about already, which is called baffle step loss. Baffle step loss is a term that's used to refer to the reflections of the surface versus the wavelength of it and the width of the baffle and at what point it becomes three-dimensional. So let me explain that and let's make application to what Ron has, has observed in listening to the speakers. First of all, the baffle step loss. What does that mean? Well, any driver, and let's take this little three-inch full-range driver here, for instance, this our little LGK driver in this little box. Um, wavelengths um, in relation to the size of the driver and the size of the baffle determine its radiation pattern. In other words, shorter wavelengths, like let's say when a driver reproduces a wavelength where the wavelength is shorter or smaller than the width of the diaphragm, then that driver is going to reproduce that wavelength in what we call the beaming frequency or a beaming range. In other words, the wavelengths are shorter than the diaphragm, so as it produces it, it's going to project it pretty much in a straight line. It's You move off to one side or the other, you're not going to hear it. It's gone. So when this driver produces 20 kHz, obviously that wavelength is much shorter than this diaphragm. It's going to beam that right at you. If you move off axis left or right, that 20 kHz output is going to just drop right off. And as frequency decreases, it starts to spread out and become more omnidirectional. Uh, by the time this little driver reaches about 2500 hertz or so, it almost has the same output 90 degrees off axis as it does on axis. It's actually outputting that, um, that wavelength uh, in a complete 180 degree range. And as you start getting lower and lower than that in frequency, it starts actually wrapping around. Those wavelengths are going to wrap around and they're going to go to the back side of the, of, the, of the speaker. So think of it as the lower wavelengths are like when you throw a rock in a pond and the ripples in the pond radiate in all directions. That's what's going on at the lowest frequency ranges. And as frequency increases, those wavelengths start narrowing and it starts beaming that output into a straight line. Now, the step loss or baffle step loss that we refer to has to do with the width, width of the baffle. The wider the baffle, the lower in frequency it's going to be before it wraps around it. The smaller the baffle, the higher in frequency that it will be and the shorter the wavelengths will be when they become omnidirectional. So like this one is only four and a half inches wide. So it becomes omnidirectional or starts to become omnidirectional uh, around 2 kHz or so. And you can see that in the measurements. You can see the step loss. And what I'm referring to as a step loss is loss of output. When that driver reproduces a sound where it starts becoming omni, and some of that energy then radiates to the back, think of it as losing half of the output of the driver because it went the other way. That output was equally distributed in all directions. Half of it went towards the back of the speaker, half of it went towards the front. So you only got half as loud. As wavelengths get shorter and it starts projecting 100% of its energy forward, then it's obviously a lot louder, twice as loud. And in this case, 6 dB or so louder. So if the baffle were um, seven and a half or eight inches, like for one of the little M130 drivers, it would start a baffle step loss at about 800 hertz. So 800, 850, uh, depending on if the corners are rounded, you know, right in that range, the 
the output is going to start to become omni and it's going to lose output. Uh, with a driver like this little uh, M165, a little six and a half, the baffle may be eight and a half inches or so in diameter and the output then would start to become omni around 750 hertz or so. Uh, so that's when you would start to see it lose output and um, just have a reduced output uh, with about a first order roll off as it goes down in frequency. Um, let's look at one. Let's look at the little uh, LGK driver. I'm going to turn the camera that way. As you can see here on the screen, the red line is the output of the little LGK driver. And we see what looks like kind of a humped up area here. It's really not humped up. This is actually the flat output of the driver. And we're seeing it start to roll off. Starting about right here is where it really starts to roll off. And it just starts losing output. And that's right where the baffle step loss occurs. That's why they call it baffle step loss. You're losing output depending on the width of the baffle. So what we do um, when we're designing a crossover for, let's say, a two-way design or something that has, um, you know, any size woofer, uh, we're allowing the inductor that we're using on that woofer to kind of fold that whole response over. And then we may use a cap after it to kind of help it cascade down. And we're, we're creating a smooth response that's starting down here where the output is level and we're dropping the top end down so that the whole thing is level. Uh, we do that with full range drivers too. I've never seen a full range or wideband driver that didn't need some kind of filter on it to help straighten out uh, either amplitude issue, uh, stored energy issue, or simple baffle step loss. Even if this has a great frequency response, you, as soon as you put it into a baffle, you're going to have baffle step loss. So you have to compensate for it. Uh, when we sell this as a kit, it comes with a little baffle step compensation circuit. And what that does is what we get here with the green line. This is the exact same speaker, measured it back to back, um, dropped the baffle step loss correction filter on it. And as you can see, it makes an unbelievably smooth curve up to about 4K Hertz. It's just ruler flat. That's like plus or minus less than half of a dB. Uh, so real smooth here. This driver has a, little, a dipped area here. It's about 5 or 6 dB. Um, and then it comes right back up and covers the top octaves pretty well. Other than that little dipped area right there, really, really smooth all the way across. But only because we've compensated for the step loss, we've brought everything else down so that it's level. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to put a baffle step loss compensation circuit on my full range driver because I'll lose sensitivity. No, not really. You're not losing sensitivity. The sensitivity that you actually have is back here at 200 hertz and less. That's where your actual sensitivity is. The rest of that is just rising. Um, if you, from, that's from an audible perspective. As you hear it, um, when you compensate for it, you're not really losing sensitivity you're balancing out to the sensitivity that you already have. Either way, the sensitivity is going to be the same back here in the lower ranges. As you can see on this one, from about five or 600 hertz and down, the sensitivity is almost exactly the same. So you're really not losing sensitivity. You're just balancing out the rest of the speaker so that it has a flat response. Without it, it would sound really hot, really hard to listen to, or it would sound as if it had really thin vocals a uh, really thin bass response compared to the rest of the frequency range. Uh, it would just sound really um, hard to listen to after a while. So the compensation circuit smooths that out. And a lot of people think, well, for my full range driver, I would rather have nothing in the signal path. That'll be better than to try and correct the amplitude. No, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's much easier to listen to once the amplitude is corrected. If you use high quality parts, in the filter, you're going to have very little um, insertion loss, very little degradation in the signal quality. It's still going to sound uh, very similar to what it did with nothing in the path if the parts quality is high. Uh, you're not really going to lose that much quality from the crossover, but the amplitude issues are pretty considerable. Now, 
make an application to this. Uh, let's talk about what Ron was observing. Ron was saying that the speakers that he has, which included a pair of little LGKs, tend to disappear really well uh, compared to their wider counterparts uh, because it doesn't have a lot of surface reflection. So at a higher frequency, this speaker is already becoming omni and it doesn't have a lot of energy reflecting back towards the listener. Uh, yes, it does have baffle step loss, but it is corrected. And I know a lot of people out there think, well, I don't want to have to correct for that. What I'll do is just make the baffle bigger. And if you make the baffle bigger and wider, it'll shift that loss down into a lower frequency range. In other words, it'll look higher or maintain a higher sensitivity all the way across. And when you see manufacturers post frequency response measurements of their drivers, one of the things that they do, or almost all, the thing they do every time, is they put it on an infinite baffle. So it's in a great big baffle when they take the response measurement so that you're actually seeing the response of the driver without it being in an enclosure. Because as soon as you put it in an enclosure, it, it completely changes the response of the driver. As soon as you put it in an enclosure, it's got a step loss somewhere based on the width of the baffle. So when you guys look at full range drivers, they think, man, this is a really smooth response. I'll just put this in a baffle. I don't need a crossover. No. You still need a filter on it. As soon as you put it in a baffle, you have step loss. You have to compensate for it. Um, and putting it in a big wide baffle, as, as Ron noted, just makes it sound like an end wall. As soon as the baffle gets wider, all of those surface reflections are reflecting off the baffle. It's like when I'm talking to you and I start putting my hands on either side of my mouth, even though the sound of my voice coming exactly from my mouth hasn't changed, I've added surface reflections on either side of it and it's changed the way my voice sounds. It's made it sound more forward. It's the same thing with the speakers. When the baffle gets wider, it'll sound as if more energy is coming directly from the baffle and not within the room. That's why Ron says, hey, these little zero baffle uh, speaker pods from Anthony Gallo sound so transparent. They sound like they're not there. They're, they're invisible uh, because they don't have a bunch of surface reflections. Um, same goes for any of those small baffle speakers. As soon as that baffle starts getting larger in size, you just can't fight that. You can't get away from that. Baffle is still there. And I know some people try to put some felt on it and things like that. And the felt will help in the higher frequency ranges where the wavelengths are shorter, but it's still not going to help down in those lower ranges where you have vocals, where you have mid bass. All of that's going to sound like it's coming from the baffle forward instead of going into an omni pattern and sounding more transparent. So that's a physical restraint. You can't get around it. You can't get away from it. Smaller baffle designs are just going to have a big advantage when it comes to transparency and being three-dimensional. If you have any questions on that, shoot them to me, put them in the comment section. Uh, we'll do a follow-up on this one if we need to. But that's all for now. Thanks a lot, folks, for tuning in, and we'll have a new one for you next week.